Okay, I believe uh, most people with basic math skills should be able to figure this problem out without the aid of a calculator. Now, some of you might be looking at this and thinking, well, I have basic math skills, but I'm not quite sure what to do. Well, just hold on one second. If you understand that two to the second power, or two squared, means two times two, and of course that answer is four, well, this is a little bit of a clue on what to do in order to figure out this problem right here. So don't run away from this problem if you're like, well, no, I don't know what to do because this is the third power, fourth power. Well, just try to kind of follow the pattern here and see if you can figure this thing out. I'm gonna actually show you two ways to solve this problem. One is a very easy direct way. Hopefully this is the path that most you're gonna take. And then a second way is gonna be a little bit more involved, but something that you're going to need to know, especially for those of you that are studying algebra or plan to study algebra. But uh, I'm gonna show you the correct answer to this problem in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and uh, I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, uh, the problem here is 64 cubed or 64 to the third power divided by 8 to the fourth power. What is the answer? Well, let's go take a look at it right now. The answer is 64. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this right. And if that is the case, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving the ice a little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional math expert in the area of basic powers and the order of operations. Okay, so you might be thinking, what is he talking about, the order of operations? Well, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is our problem. We have 64 to the third power divided by 8 to the fourth power. So what do we need to be thinking about in order to solve this problem? Well, the first thing we need to consider is that there's actually a couple of things going on here. We have division, and we also have some powers going on. So we need to uh, figure out what comes first in terms of uh, what do we do? Do we take 64 divided by 8? You know, like what is the correct order to do this problem? Well, that's where this lovely saying right here comes in. This is PEMDAS. This is more or less our checklist uh, to figure out the proper order of, uh, of order of operations in mathematics. So in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers, these things are have to be done in a particular order. And this little saying right here, PEMDAS, uh, is our checklist, and it's a checklist that goes from left to right. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly review this, but before I get into what uh, these letters uh, mean in this particular acronym, there's kind of a cute saying that goes along with this. It's, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I'm not sure what Aunt Sally uh, did, but you know what? We thank her for her cool little phrase anyways. Okay, so just a quick review of PEMDAS. Uh, again, this is basic mathematics. Everyone uh, should know this, but P stands for uh, parentheses. So if you, see, if you see things in parentheses or brackets or these type of brackets uh, like this, these are what we call grouping symbols in mathematics. They're going to start there. Now I can kind of uh, give you a more detailed explanation of the order of operations, but here's the thing. If you want to learn more or practice the order of operations, there's a lot more uh, complicated, interesting problems than this one right here. But nevertheless, we need to consider the order of operations. So P is the first thing. Of course, in this particular problem, we don't have uh, parentheses. So E is our next thing, and that uh, is basically powers. So when we're dealing with things like two to the third power, this little three up here is called the exponent. Okay, this uh, number indicates the exponent. The two is what we call the base and the entire thing is a power. Okay, so this E really kind of stands for exponents, but it means, hey, do powers. Now, of course, we do um, have powers here, so obviously this is gonna be part of our checklist. Okay, so M, D, A, and S. M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and S uh, stands for subtraction. And most uh, students 
or many students think that, oh, I have to do this in this particular order, always multiplication, then division, then addition and subtraction. That's actually not the way this part of the checklist works. What we have to do is consider M and D and A and S as groups. So we're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see from um, first from left to right. So if we see multiplication, then division, we're going to do it this way. If we see division first, then multiplication, we'll do it this way. Same thing for addition and subtraction. Okay, so this is the first thing that we need to kind of really understand is the order of operations and, of course, uh, a basic understanding of powers and exponents. So let's go ahead and get into the next step now and uh, think about what 64 cubed divided by 8 to the 4th power is and think about what do we need to do first, okay? Using our little PEM, PEMDAS checklist, we're going to have to take care of the powers, right? So let me kind of erase this so we can kind of focus in. So when you're doing any kind of number operations or order of operations problem in math, you have to keep that PEMDAS in mind. You're like, right, I can't do division yet because in the PEMDAS I have PE. I'm going to have to take care of these exponents. So effectively, we'll have to do this and this, and then whatever the answers are, we will divide lastly. But there's another uh, very good way to approach this problem, and that is to kind of consider it as a fraction. In other words, we have 64 cubed divided by 8 uh, to the 4th power. I could rewrite this problem as a fraction, and that is really kind of the best way to go. So 64 cubed is our numerator, and that is being divided by, okay, that division sign is the same thing as this fraction bar, and of course we have down here 8 uh, to the 4th power. And uh, this is a very, very good way to look at this problem. Matter of fact, it's the easiest way for sure. So anytime you have division, uh, you know, it's not a bad idea to think of that division problem as a fraction. And that's what I'm going to do here. We have 64 to the third power being divided by 8, eight to the fourth power. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and think about what does it mean to have 64 to the third power and 8 to the fourth power. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so 64 to the third power means take 64 right, and multiply it by itself three times. So one, two, three, this is 64 to the third power. Again, 64 being multiplied by third uh, by itself three times. So the exponent is the number of time you're, gonna, you're going to multiply that number by itself. And of course we have eight to the fourth power, so we're gonna take eight and multiply it by itself uh, four times. Okay, so hopefully a lot of you are like, um, oh, maybe I kind of see where this guy is going. So what do you think is going to be the next step in this particular prom? Well, if you um, weren't able to get the prom, you should maybe pause the video and think about what I'm going to do next because this is going to be very, very easy to do. And what I'm talking about is for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button. This is very, very helpful to the growth of my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for a long, um, well, actually many years. Uh, I love YouTube. It's a great platform for me to teach. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, I teach from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So um, my whole idea behind my YouTube channel is to teach in a relaxed non-math, uh, light textbook, technical way, really try to explain things uh, in a clear and understandable way. That is my goal. But uh, anyways, by you subscribing, it really does help me out. Okay, so back to the problem. All right, so right here is the kind of our setup, right? We talked about how we could write this problem, 64 cubed divided by eight to the fourth as a fraction. And now we can think of this problem as 64 times 64 times 64. And now we have 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. But what we want to do, if possible, is try to find like factors. See, 64 and 64, these are factors, okay, one big product. Of course, I can go into my calculator or just do this by hand and get the product of all these uh, 64s being multiplied together. That's a lot of work. We don't want to do that. But what we want to do is see if we can construct a 64. Now, another thing you could do is take these 64s up here and be like, you know what? I know 64 is the same thing as 8 times 8, right? So we can just kind of look at this problem like this as a bunch of 8s. But why do that when we have 8 times 8 and times 8 times 8? Because 8 times 8 is 64, and then this 8 times 8 is 64 as well. The idea is to get the same numbers 
in the numerator as in the denominator. This is very, very important when it comes to fractions, and this is how you simplify. Okay, so when you simplify a fraction, let's take a fraction like uh, 10 over 20. Okay, we all should know that that is equal to 1 half, but why is that equal to 1 half? Well, 10 over 20, if we look at the factors, this 10 is uh, 1 times 10, and 20 is 2 times 10, we can cross-cancel these like factors. It's the same number in the numerator and denominator, and we're just left with the 1 half, and that is the idea here. Okay, of course, we have uh, uh, 64s all over the place. So we can cross-cancel. Um, a lot of these 64s are actually two pairs or two, two and two. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So here we have 64 times 64 times 64 over 64 times 64. We can cross-cancel 164 to 164, okay? Not one. It's not one to two. It's one to one. So if I have a 64 here, it can take out 164 over here. I have another 64, so it can take out another one up here. And that leaves me with simply a 64 over 1 or just 64, which, of course, is our answer. All right, so hopefully most of you took this path. And uh, even if you, um, back over here, if you looked at this problem as a bunch of 8s, and you go, oh, this is 8 times 8 times 8 times 8 uh, times 8 times 8 on boom, boom, boom. You could have done that. It's just, you know, more work and unnecessary. You always uh, want to try to uh, find the biggest factors so you don't have to factor so much. But this is kind of the main idea to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. Now, I'm going to show you a completely different way to approach this problem, a little bit more um, interesting, especially for those of you that need to learn more advanced math like uh, algebra. Okay, so here is another approach. And uh, if you took this approach, that is fantastic. But uh, this one's a little bit uh, a little bit more work, but it's one that you should be aware of how to do. Okay, so 64, all right, we couldn't think of 64 to the third power is the same thing as 2 to the 6 to the uh, to the third power. See, 2 to the 6 is, in fact, 64. Okay, so 64 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So here we have 2 times 2 which of course is two, and this is eight. Two, uh, this is uh, two times two times two is eight. Two times two, two over here times two is eight. So a little bit of a tongue twister here. So eight times eight is 64, okay? So it's really kind of a good idea to try to express big uh, a base in mathematics. Okay, this again, this is the base of a power as a power, uh, power itself, especially when you have two different numbers, because if we can rewrite 64, and eight with the same base, then this problem uh, becomes quite easy to do. All right, so 64 to the third power, we can think of that, uh, think of that as two to the sixth to the third power, and eight to the fourth power, eight is the same thing as two times two times two, so that's two cubed to the fourth power. Okay, so I'm gonna be using some um, basic properties of powers and exponents. These are things that you absolutely need to know, especially uh, if you plan on being successful in algebra. But what we can do here now, 2 to the 6th to the 3rd power, there is a rule when we um, work with powers and exponents. When we take a power to an outside power or an outside exponent, we could just simply multiply this outside exponent to the inside exponent. So 2 to the 6th to the 3rd power is the same thing as 2 to the 18th power. So if that's the case, we have 2 to the 3rd power we take that 4, multiply by 3, that is going to be 2 to the 12th. Okay, so what does this mean here? Well, it means we have uh, 18 twos up here, right? We can just write this out all day. 18 over here, and we're dividing by 12 twos. We can, do, we can just kind of expand all this out, but that's not necessary but can we, because we can use another uh, property of powers and exponents, and that is the division of powers. So you could divide two powers if those powers have the same base. Then what we can do is subtract when we're dividing in this manner. We can subtract the exponents. And it's going to be the numerator exponent, and then we're going to subtract away the denominator exponent like so. So this is going to be two to the 18 minus 12th, or uh, two to the 18 minus 12, which of course is six, or two to the six, which of course we already know is 64. 
Now, a lot of you might uh, say, wow, that was interesting, but this is definitely the long way to do this prom. And uh, I would agree. However, I did this prom um, using powers and exponents just to kind of demonstrate some of the stuff that you're definitely going to have to do uh, in algebra. Okay, Oftentimes, you'll do a prom like this, it's, but instead of numbers, you'll have variable expressions, right? You'll have things like this. And so you're not going to just be able to use numeric factors. Okay, so again, in mathematics, you know, there's a lot of different approaches you can take. And sometimes when you see a problem and, um, you know, if I say, hey, or someone tells you, hey, you should be able to solve that problem. And you say initially to yourself, no, I don't think I could do that. Well, you know, give yourself a chance to think about the problem. Okay, that's kind of the main idea of solving any problem. Just don't make it a, a, an assessment of whether you can figure it out or not. You know, put some thinking into it and then some uh, logic, and oftentimes, you know, kind of solutions will come to mind. All right, now, uh, this level of math, you know, we're talking about uh, factors and algebra. I'm going to give you a couple suggestions here. One, I have a ton of additional uh, YouTube um, uh, videos on these type of topics, so if you want to learn more or practice more, uh, you can check out, again, my YouTube channel. Uh, but if you want, like, more formal instruction uh, in basic mathematics, check out my math foundation course. I'll leave that in the description below. And if you need some help with powers and exponents in terms of kind of like algebra, I teach that in my pre-algebra and algebra one courses as well. You'll find links to all that stuff in the description below. But uh, with the, all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.